right, everybody, welcome. My name is Teresa Lewis, and I work with Mary Wiley over at Autumn Leaves, and we're excited to be able to offer you this virtual seminar today. Um, this is new to us, so I hope everything goes smoothly. So it's my first, actually my second time, actually the, the first time was earlier this morning, to do a Zoom meeting. So um, what I'm gonna do is go over just a few housekeeping uh, items here and welcome Elaine. We are just getting started. So what I wanna do is show you here here we go. So I took um, a few screenshots from different uh, devices. This one here is an iPhone. So just to, just to let you know, we are going to open it up for questions and answers at the end. But if anything comes up, you can uh, chat or raise your hand, and I will try to keep an eye on that. So on an iPhone, if you choose participants on it, um, you'll be able to see the list of participants and be able to raise your hand here. And then this is a screenshot if you're using an iPad. So at the top here, you click participants and you see the list and you can raise your hand. And I believe right over here, there's a more and then, then you get this drop down here. And then this is a screenshot from a laptop if you're using a laptop and this is in what's called speaker view. So this allows the speaker to be prominent here and the guests to be up here. But there's also an option for gallery if you want to see it. I call it kind of the Brady Bunch look where we're all in a gallery. But again, there is a participants button and you can see the list of participants and then raise your hand here. And welcome, Lori. We are just getting started. And Patty, hello, welcome. So I was just going over a few things in terms of how to raise your hand um, or chat during, there should be a chat function feature there that you see on your screen. Um, but we will open it up to Q&A at the end. Just wanted to, to make mention of that. I wanted to start off um, with a quick poll just to get an idea of how you heard about our seminar. So if you don't mind indulging me and just sharing how you heard about it. So you can just click on, there's, it's a multiple choice. So if you saw two different things, you can let me know that too. I'll just give it just a second here for you to share with me how you heard about the, the seminar today. Okay, so it looks like a lot of people um, saw it through the, um, the email that came out from Autumn Leaves. So thank you very much for sharing that. So I am going to pause my sharing. Here, just real quick. Do you still see my screen? Yes. Uh, Laura, you do, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so I think I switched over. So, our co-host today is Laura Morgan. She's a professional organizer with Sorted Out. She's been with them since 2016. So, as a professional organizer, she has experience working in both the home environment and in the office environment. And she's actually had an appearance on the A&E show, Hoarding Buried Alive. So we have a celebrity in the virtual room here. <laughs> um, so I'm really excited to hand the mic over to Laura. Good morning, ladies. Can I see their faces, Teresa? Or can we um, see faces? I see names, but I don't see anybody's faces. So they have the option to choose if they would like to share the, the video with us. Oh. So if you're comfortable with doing that, we'd love to see you. Um, otherwise, we, we understand it's early and maybe you haven't <laughs> had a chance to, to get up and get going. So that's good too. Probably the, the most important thing um, when you work as a professional organizer is that you have to live in a space of non-judgment. So ladies, there is no judgment about if you got bedhead or a cup of coffee or anything like that. It's really no judgment at all. But thank you so much, Patrice, for having, oh, hi, Amy. She got brave, yay. <laughs> thank you, Teresa, so much for having me. This is such a delight. Um, it's such an interesting time we're living in. And I love that we have this option where we can connect virtually like this. So let me tell y'all just a tiny bit about myself. Um, I have been in the professional organizing realm for about it's almost seven years now. Uh, this is my second career in my lifetime. Prior to this time, I spent a lot of time in the nonprofit sector. 
And when I was tired, not tired, but you know, you get a little burnout after a while, I decided, what am I good at? You know, what am I good at? And people had always my whole life said, Laura, you know, could you come help me organize? Could you come help me do this? You know, you seem so put together, which, you know, we can circle back to, you know, things are not always as they, see, as they seem at another point. But I started getting into, well, maybe this is something I could do as a career. I had no idea. So I literally Googled professional organizing. Hi, Lori. And I um, was fortunate enough to be hired by a company based out of Virginia, uh, Richmond, Virginia, called Abundance Organizing. And they absolutely instilled in me that it is a career and that I had to get some education. To, before I could go out and do this for myself. So I was very fortunate. I have, uh, I hold certificates. Uh, my specialty is working with ADD, ADHD, and chronically disorganized individuals. I also just completed a year long certification with a group called Productive Environment Institute. And I was sharing with Teresa that doing paper, this is all about uh, PEI is all about setting up systems for papers and filing, whether it's actual physical paper or digital paper. So I'm always like, <laughs> I'm always interested in furthering and, and continuing to grow and sharing this. I, I can be very passionate about this. So as Teresa said, if you have any questions, you can raise your hand, but we're going to open it up. So be thinking about your questions. Um, otherwise, it'll just be real boring to listen to me for the whole um, our whole time together today. So Teresa sent me a list of like five talking points. And I wanted to start with, here's a really great quote. And I want y'all to remember this, you might want to jot it down as you look around your house and you start to think, oh, it's so cluttered, I don't know where to start. So Barbara Hempfield, um, one of the gurus in the organizing world, she always says, clutter is postponed decisions. And that really resonated with me the first time I heard her say that because it is true because oftentimes we look at it and we go, Ugh, I just can't deal with this right now. And we turn and we walk away. And that's literally a postponed decision. So if we can shift our mindset into, oh, let me just take action on this right now, then we can get ahead of the curve. But there's another woman that was a guru in the organizing world. Her name is Julie Morgenstern. And she taught me the process of organizing. And I can send out this information later, Teresa, you can share it with everybody later, but it's called the space method. Okay, so the first thing when you want to organize, say you're ready to tackle a project today, right? But you don't know where to start. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna identify the area that you wanna work on. And I would really encourage you to start small at first, because we have a tendency to go into our closet and say, I can knock this out in a couple of hours. And we pull everything out. And then six hours later, you look at it and there's this huge pile of clothes in your floor and you're like, oh my gosh, what do I do now? I'm exhausted, I'm done with this. So start small, set yourself up for success. You know, pick, it, pick your junk drawer in the kitchen or something like that. Everybody has a junk drawer, although someone informed me recently that we refer to them as utility drawers, not junk drawers but I'm a big junk drawer girl. So you start small. And the first step you wanna take is you wanna sort your stuff. So you wanna put it with like, with like, with like. You put all your red pins here, all your blue pins here, your tapes here, your scissors here. That way you can get a visual on how much of any one thing that you have. And then you can start to purge. After you're sorting, you purge stuff. So what does purge mean? That means you wanna take a look at it and say, do I really, need, want, or desire this thing. You know, um, if I have 47 blue pins, do I really need 47 blue pins? Or is that just adding to the clutter in my junk drawer? So you get down to, you purge to what you want to keep. Now in the purging process, you're going to do three things. You're going to either decide to keep it, you're going to decide to donate it, or you're going to decide to discard it, you know, recycle or trash, whatever it is. So you sort that all out and make those decisions in the purging process. And then your next thing to do is you wanna assign it a home. Where is it gonna live? You know, um, and I, no two homes are alike, no two individuals are alike. So one of the things that I like to do with my clients is really create those systems that are unique to you. You know, what's gonna work best for you? 
um, because what works best for me may not work best for you. So I'm going to get to know you. I'm going to talk to you. We're going to figure it out. But you know you better than everybody. So you know what your limitations are and what will you do? You know, again, we often have this belief system that, oh, this is what I want to do. I'm going to do this. But at the end of the day, you got to be really honest with yourself and say, what will I do? So be realistic about your organizing goals. So you want to assign it a home. So you want to take your things that your, your go-to things, your things that are super active, you want to keep those in the front. You know, if you have something that is used occasionally, you can put that in the back. And then those things that are rarely used, you put them up high, you put them out of, out of your way because you don't want to have to reach over something that you never use to get to something that you always use. So you're going to assign it a home and then you're going to containerize it. Containers are really useful and important, but I will really urge you not to go to the container store or Walmart, Target, the dollar store and buy a bunch of just random containers. I want you to be thoughtful about, is this container going to fit the space? Does it make sense for it to go here? Um, you know, do I like the way the container looks? Um, one of the things I do like to go to the container store and I like to purchase the clear acrylic bins. Um, B I N Z inner design is a name of a product that we like very much. Linus L I N U S. I love all those bins that come in different sizes, different shapes. Um, and depending on your style, you may want to go with a clear bin because you can easily see exactly everything that's in it. Or if visual clutter drives you crazy, go ahead and get a basket, but you want to put a label on everything. Labels are important because that's a visual cue for you as to where your item needs to go back. I love to tell this story about this client I had. She had three teenagers and we were doing her pantry. And uh, I said, now I'm just going to put some labels on these bins. And she said, oh, I don't want labels. And I was like, well, it's not really for you. It's for the people that you live with. So let's put some, so that these teenagers, we can start teaching our kids and teens and husbands and spouses where to put things back. So she reluctantly let me put labels on things. So the next time, six weeks later, I go back to see her and she opens the front door. She's like, look what I have. And she had gone out and purchased her own label maker. And she was so very proud of the, her labels and she was kind of gone crazy with labels. But you do want to have a label on it because it's a visual cue as to where it needs to go. And then the last thing you want to do after you've set your system up and you know, what you think is going to work for you, you want to equalize it. And that means you want to go back and you want to visit it again, you know, a couple of weeks, make some tweaks. Is it working for you? Do you need to switch the place? Maybe it's not exactly what you thought. So you want to, nothing is ever going to be a hundred percent set. I always like to say everything is pretty much just firmly etched in jello. And that's just kind of how life is. So you've got to be willing to revisit your systems. What do you want to do? Is it working? Is it not working? If you have a family that lives with you, um, it adds another layer of opportunity in that you have to teach your people in your world how to honor, respect, and use the organizing system that you have put into place in your home or office, wherever you choose to do it. So we have sorted, we've purged, we've assigned a home, we're containerizing, and then we're equalizing. So that's the space method for organizing. So, okay, that's how you're going to do it. So let's walk through, not literally, but well, let's, let's move through a home and think about what we wanna do. The first thing that's really important is to keep your flat surfaces clear. Why is that? Study after study shows that visual clutter creates mind clutter. We don't often have an awareness of how that works, that it, it is causing stress or anxiety or whatever the, I guess we could label a negative emotion is, but it does. And so if you want to get your, you want to try your best to keep your counters clear. We have a tendency to drop things you know, and we get used to dropping those things. So we call that in the professional organizing world, we call that a drop zone. So I wanna encourage you guys to create a drop zone, meaning when you walk in the door, 
Where are you gonna drop your keys, your mail, your coats, all that stuff. Create one zone for your drop zone and that way you're not dropping all over the house. Um, some of my chronically disorganized clients that I work with, I, get, I, I love to watch them move through a house because they drop something here and they take four or five more steps and they drop something over there. And I see Amy's nodding her head and there's no judgment here, but it, it, it is, um, it's what we do. But if we can intentionally create a drop zone, then that gives us an opportunity to keep the rest of our counters clear. So you also want to set a space limit. So when you're creating your drop zone, you want to say it's only going to be this big not the entire counter. So how do you do that? This is where you come back in, you've got a container of some sort. You've got a basket, you've got, you know, that you can drop your keys, change, you know, your husband's, husband's and their wallets and keys are always a big deal. Um, cell phones, have something, a, a container of some sort. I personally have this, um, it's a long silver platter that I got in Mexico about 35 years ago. And it's pretty, it has a big sun on it. It's pretty, but it's a perfect drop zone for stuff. And then my visual cue that it's time to do something with my drop zone so that it doesn't spread out and take over the rest of the counter is when that container gets full and I can see that it's like, okay, I have to stop. I have to take a minute and I have to clear my container out and make decisions and not let that clutter build up again. So it's, it's, I'm not postponing the decisions. I see that it's getting overwhelmed. So I'm gonna take a moment and I'm gonna pick it up and I'm gonna take them to their homes, whatever it is. You know, if it's, you know, my husband's spare change out of his pocket, I'm gonna go drop it in the, you know, coin container thing that we have in the bedroom. So that's the kind of thing that we're gonna do. So you wanna set a space limit on where you put things. Don't let it spread. That's, that's very common for things to spread. And then you also want to know where things live. That goes back to assigning a home for everything. Where does it make sense for you, for this thing to live? And I encourage you to think outside the box. This is your space. It doesn't have to be like everybody else's space. You can go and read blogs about how to be a professional organizer and you can look at all the pretty um, pictures online, but I want you to be realistic about it. I worked with a client one time that she was chronically disorganized. Her closet was a disaster. She was a lovely woman. She was very successful, but her closet was a big walk-in closet. And for whatever reason, she just refused to hang her clothes up. It was just not in her DNA to hang clothes up. So it was like, okay, let's be creative. How can we assist her in getting all these beautiful clothes up off the floor? So what we ended up doing was installing hooks, just a good old fashioned hook on her wall. Because what we discovered was that the simple action of hanging something up on a hook, she would do. She wouldn't put it on a hanger which was fine because we came up with a creative solution to keep the clutter of clothes off of her floor. It also helped her be more organized as to what needed to be washed, what needed to be taken to the cleaner. She also had the same thing with um, opening and closing drawers, just a step she didn't want to take. So it's what, what will you do? I will drop all my stuff in baskets. So we went and we got a bunch of baskets and we put labels on them that said, you know, um, sleepwear, workout wear, um, sports bras, that sort of thing. And she would drop her stuff in there. And it, it wasn't, you would never have seen this on a beautiful blog about how beautiful a home can look, but it was very functional for her and it worked really well for her. So be creative when you're thinking about what works best for you. Um, let's see, purge things at you, as you come across them in your home. So that Barbara Hemphill I mentioned earlier, she also says, she's a very wise woman. She also says, if you can do it in 60 seconds or less, do it right then. And I love that because 60 seconds is, is I mean, you can do a lot in 60 seconds. But again, we get stuck in that thought process of, oh, I don't have time to do this. But if it's 60 seconds or less, you actually do have time to do it. And you will be amazed at how it assists you in getting ahead of the clutter that you may have in your home. Not only that, but it feels really good to catch yourself 
you know, doing something in the moment. And that's another thing is as you're starting your organizing journey, be really gentle with yourself. Don't, you know, set those expectations so high that you're going to fail. And don't forget to celebrate the successes. We as, as humans have a tendency to say, when someone says, oh, you did a great job or something, we just kind of blow it off. But boy, if someone says we needed, to, you could have done this differently. Oh, we just, you know, agonize over it. So it's, don't forget to give yourself a pat on the back. I'm a big believer in saying, hey, great job. You know, if sometimes you just got to give your own self a pat on the back and not wait for anybody else to do it. So we are, let's see, I'm looking at my list to make sure that we've gone through everything. Yep, yep, yep. Keep surfaces clear. Yeah, 60 seconds or less. So that was a whole lot of information I just dumped on you in a hurry. And I'm hoping that you're going to have some questions about all this information or anything else, anything specific to your life. I would love to see if we can come up with a creative solution to get you motivated to get organized today, tomorrow, or whenever. I have a question. Okay. Hi, Lori. Hi. Um, papers and mail, um, those tend to pile up and pile up. And, mm -hmm. and I agree with uh, taking care of it if you can right then, but some things you can't right then. And, right. Um, you know, what do you suggest about just managing all of that? So what I like to do is create um, a mail station. So you think about when you bring your mail in the house, um, it's, it's good to develop a habit, you know, whether you want to keep it close to your drop zone or if you have a home office or wherever you do your paperwork is where you want to take your mail. And if you can take 60 seconds to just go through and make quick decisions, you're going to either need to file something, meaning I got to, I got to set this to the side because it needs to be filed later. Or, you know, maybe that's like your bank statement or, you know, a financial statement of some sort, an insurance record or something. Those need to be filed later. So file or you need to take action on it. Something you need to give to somebody else you need to get, uh, or you need to pay a bill. So you have your file pile, you have your action pile, and then you have your toss pile. So if you can take 60 seconds and real quick make those decisions that, oh, I need to take action on this and this is going to be filed and this can just go away right now. That will cut down greatly on the amount of paper and mail. And then you can take those file and action piles to wherever you take your action to do, you know, again, whatever your home office, home workspace is. You can take your bills, your file and act papers to that space, but at least you've gotten rid of all the other stuff. And I also want to, I always encourage people to be really, um, you know, be aware of whether you're actually going to use the coupons. Do you really going to look through the catalog? You know, be ruthless with yourself at first until you start to see that, oh, well, maybe I do really, I would use that coupon. But at first, you know, I always encourage people to maybe do the opposite of what they've been doing for a long time, especially if it's not working and just see if it works, if it feels different and you can develop some new habits. Habits take, there's lots of controversy, but habits take generally about 21 days to develop a new habit. Um, we live in a world of instant gratification and sometimes we don't want to take 21 days, but I'm going to encourage you anytime you start a new project to stick with it for at least 21 days. And I think you'll feel really excited about the shifts and changes you see at the end of those 21 days. Did that answer you? Was that helpful, Lori? Yes, and um, my husband has the worst problem <laughs> I do with that. Um, you know how often I hear that. <laughs> but it is, it is, I mean, you know, it's, it is difficult to, to manage even, you know, the notes, the notes I'm taking now, you know, and, and, um, I'm going to put those on the computer later. So okay, you know, I'll have it there and not on a, on a piece of paper, but I do tend to take lots of notes and notebooks and, mm -hmm. um, you know, those kind of stack up and have to have a place to live. And so I also take notes. I'm a copious note taker. And what I found out about myself, and I would 
venture to guess that you're probably the same way is that's how you're retaining your information. How often do you go back and look at your notes? I mean, sometimes I think that, yeah, I'm, I'm the same way. So I have a spiral notebook that I, I've had a used spiral notebook system for 20 years. I make time at the, you know, December, first couple of weeks of January, I go through, I keep two years of notebooks at a time because I might go back and reference anything beyond that. I just let it go. I'll flip through it one more time to see if there's anything that is really pertinent to me. And if it is, I'll either scan it in, I'll take a picture of it with my phone and then I let it go. The otherwise we'll all start drowning in spiral notebooks. But that's a, you know, again, I'm a big fan of if you don't want to take that extra step, you may like to do the, to type it up on the computer. That'd be another way to incorporate the learning into your system. But if you don't, you, you don't, not tactile like that, you can always just scan it or take a picture of it. I'm a big fan of taking pictures of things that I would want, like Bed Bath & Beyond coupon. I don't have Bed Bath & Beyond coupons anymore, but I have the code on my phone. So that when I go to the store, I can just, they can just, you know, scan the code on my phone. Business cards. I do not take business cards from other people anymore because I, I don't know what to do with them. You know, for, I was just drowning in business cards. So now I'll take a picture of, you know, the person will say, oh, Laura, here's my card. I'll take a picture of it. I'll save it in my gallery. I'll put a couple of notes in with it. And I have an entire um, album of business cards with just a couple of notes about where I met this person and what kind of services um, they offer. And then I don't have any more paper with me. Um, I don't ever believe, guys, that we'll ever be a true paperless society, but I do think that we can greatly reduce the amount of paper that we bring into our homes. If you're not already doing automatic bill pay, go ahead and do that. Set yourself up on auto draft as for anything that you can. It'll make your life much easier. And then when the other paper comes in, like you know your explanation of benefits that you get from insurance and that sort of thing, Y'all don't, we don't need to keep those. And I'll be happy to share, Teresa, if you'll help me remember, I have a list that says what you need to keep and how long you need to keep it for. Or you can, um, Dave Ramsey, you can Google him. He also has a great list that you can utilize. Uh, so does Susie Orman. Uh, you can go onto their websites and they have also a very thorough list about what you need to keep, how long you need to keep it. And then Lori, I don't know what to do about your husband. You know, we've all got it. You know, <laughs> there's always something. <laughs> husband, teenager, dog, whatever. We've all got them. So anybody else? Hi, hey, Amy. Okay. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I had a question back when you were talking about assigning things at home. Okay. I don't have a husband and I am the clutter bug. I'm the free spirit and I've got four kids, twins that are adults at 20, they come and go for college. They're planning to leave in the next two to three years fully, maybe. And then I have nine and six year old elementary oh kids. Okay. But I, I struggle, <laughs> I struggle myself with that system of assigning. So like mm -hmm. your example of start with a drawer and then I go, oh, okay, well this doesn't go here. And then I take it over to the other space that's also not organized, but that's supposed to be its home now, <laughs> you know? so. I feel like even in doing that, things get lost in the next space that I haven't yet gotten to because there's just, I mean, it's just not fully assigned yet. And like you said, I think the labeling is a big deal because nobody can go behind me and know what I was doing. And then it starts all over again. So I kind of like, how would you address that? Or what are the thoughts I need to be thinking as I go through that? I love To try and figure out. Yeah, no, I love that you asked this question because this is perfect because organizing is a process. It's not something that's going to be completed in a day. And I always tell my clients, it's going to get way worse before it gets better. So you're going to be in process. And that's what most people don't, what we don't realize is that it is going to get worse before we get better. And we got to be patient with ourselves. And that's when we often give up is because it's like, this is just too much. I can't do it. So it's okay. Start with that drawer 
and go ahead and move it to where you think it should live. It's okay. It doesn't have to be finished today. Set a timer for yourselves. Um, say, you know, I'm going to work on this project for an hour. Yay. Set, literally set a timer. I do this with kids. I do this with my son all the time. And he's like, oh, I don't want to do this. It's like, okay, you only have to do this for 30 minutes. It's amazing. Just that little mind game that if you only have to do something for an hour, it's amazing how much you can get done. So set a timer for yourself and go ahead. And again, I want you to focus on how great it feels on that drawer not on what, what's happening over in the other corner where the other stuff moved. Focus on that drawer, build on that success. And then, the, you know, the next time you set aside an hour for organizing, you'll tackle that. It's, it's a process. It's not going to be perfect, especially if you have four other humans living in your house with you. So be gentle with yourself. Anybody else? Teresa, do you see there's something in a chat down at the bottom? Or maybe I'll click on it and see what happens. Oh, and sent, look at that, the organizing your important documents. Thank you. That was, uh, and very much, thank you much. That's a great thing. She sent um, the Dave Ramsey blog, organizing your important documents. Very nice, thank you. Hi, Diane. Oh, hi. I finally figured out how to do that. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Did you have a question for us today? Well, I, I was going to ask about pictures. You know, I'm constantly getting pictures of kids and grandkids, and mm -hmm. of course you always want to display them but uh, you kind of run out of room after a while of where to mm -hmm. put things. So um, I suppose the, the best solution is to put the most current ones up and hide the other ones away somewhere. But uh, anyway, that, that's kind of a problem for me, just finding room for all my pictures. So you can buy, yes, that, and, and pictures are something that, um, I will tell you guys, if any of you guys could come up with an affordable solution, here's a business idea. Go, an affordable way to go into people's homes and take care of their pictures, whether you scan it, you create photo books, you would be a bazillionaire. That's not something that I would ever want to do, but I have so many of my clients asking questions about pictures and photos. What do I do? So you put the ones out that bring you joy. You know, what are the ones that you love, that you smile when you see the rest of them? Of course, we don't want to get rid of them unless you have duplicates. And I do encourage you, if you have duplicates, to go ahead and let that, that go. Um, but just all you have to do is you can buy them anywhere. It, you know, those pretty little photo boxes, just at least get them all containerized. You don't have to organize them by year or by family member or anything like that. Just keep them all in a box. And then on a rainy day, or if you're bored someday, you can organize your pictures. But you know, a, just an easy way to start is to get them all containerized in a photo box and be done with it and just put the ones out that you love the most. Which also makes me think of something else. I'm gonna get on my soapbox about displaying and keeping things that were gifts. I had a client and I was working with her. We were downsizing and there was this tea set and I said, now, what are we going to do? We were doing the sorting, purging, making decisions process. And I said, well, and I made the comment, something like, well, this is pretty. And they, she said, Ugh. I was like, Ugh, what does that mean? And she was like, oh, well, my aunt gave that to me. And I never really liked my aunt. And I don't like that tea set. So I said to her, I said, oh, well, then why are you keeping it? And she's like, well, because it was a gift. And I was like, well, but gifts are given freely and then they are yours to choose what to do with. So why are you holding on to something that every time you look at it, it makes you feel, Ugh. you know, and she did, she felt guilty because she didn't like it. So I laughed and she said, okay, okay. So we ended up donating it. So it was funny how, you know, things come around, what comes around goes around last year, my, next door neighbor is an 85 year old lady and she was moving into assisted living and she's very sweet and very kind. And she called me over one day and she said, I have a gift for you. And it was her China 
it was for a 12 for place settings for 12. Well, I don't use China and not only that, but this was probably the ugliest China I'd ever seen in my life, to be very honest with you. And I was like, oh no, what am I going to do? So I take it to my house and I, it literally for three weeks, it sat in the corner of my dining room. And I, every time I walked past it, I thought, oh, what am I going to do with this? And then it was like, Laura, you need to practice what you preach. So I did, I loaded it up. I took it down to this little place in our neighborhood. That's a, a real resale shop. Um, so someone out there, I'm sure purchased the whole set for $20 and they love it. And I felt good about a, that I was integrity, that I actually practice what I preach, but also that someone else is going to love that. And it's not just going to take up space in the corner of my dining room. So anytime you have one of those things that you've had forever, it's often fun to think about what if I don't, if it doesn't bring me joy, if it, if it doesn't make me happy anymore, let's send it back out and let somebody else use it and, and attain joy from it. I don't agree. I mean, everybody's heard of the Marie Kondo method. Um, and I think she's done a wonderful thing for the uh, professional organizing business. Uh, I don't agree with everything she says, but I do love what she says about, does it bring you joy? I'm not going to, tell my clothes goodbye or anything like that. But if it doesn't bring me joy, I don't need it in my space. And that it might bring somebody else joy. So I let it go. Anything else, ladies? I feel like I want to hear from May. Oh, Amy. Yes, ma'am. I have another question about um, and maybe this can be just included with some of the things for when we're thinking about this later, as okay. far as the tips for, to just like maybe either by room, you know, these kind of things when you go and you, I need to figure out what might work for me and you're looking for a simple place and I don't just want to Google it and get everything that's listed under organizing. Right. Kitchen, you know, to try and bring that beauty to the space that, I mean, I do agree with that, that you want to enjoy the space mm -hmm. that, that, you know, as much as the stuff in it. Um, but that, I just don't think that way. <laughs> and I don't see that way. Um, and honestly, I mean, sometimes that's why, that's why professional order organizers are here. Uh, I had a client send me one time. She's like, Laura, I'm fascinated by the way your brain work. And I was like, but I'm as equally fascinated that yours doesn't. So there's neither yeah. one is wrong. It was just like you just said, Amy, you don't see it that way. I could nope. walk in your space and say, oh, now this, this is how mm -hmm. we do it. So sometimes it is helpful just maybe if nothing else to have a consultation with a professional organizer. And, you know, I know that for, for us right now, um, we have been, doing virtual consultations because it's, we can't go into other people's homes. So we've been doing virtual consultations and, you know, so I can, we can see your space and give you thought starters. Um, and then you can take it from there, but it, you know, think about what's going to fit in your space. So that means you really have to look and say, if this, if I want to put this, okay, say you have some bookshelves, and you have a bunch of papers that need a home. Okay, well, I could probably put those papers in a basket and put them on my bookshelves. I would know where my papers were and they wouldn't be cluttering stuff up and I wanna put a label on it. So what kind of container do I need? I could find a basket, but I need to make sure that it's gonna fit on my bookshelf so that you don't, you know, so you actually have to maybe measure your bookshelf to find out how deep it is, how wide it is before you go out and shop, you know, the uh, drawer dividers, I'll just give you a few little tips for some products that I love to use. Um, so if you go to containers, remember I mentioned that Linus drawer dividers, they come in all different sizes and all different depths. If you want to organize your um, junk drawer, you take the dimensions of your junk drawer, measure it out, you go to the container store, and you tell the lady that you want the drawer dividers to organize your drawer and she's gonna take you right over to this place. They actually have this amazing little tool. It's a grid where you can go get all the different sizes of drawer dividers and you can basically build your own drawer. With you know, say, so, okay, I want this little container for pens. I want this little container for notepads. This one for 
um, paper clips. So you want, you need different sizes for those kinds of things. And and, um, you know, they're a great resource. Uh, they're a little bit more expensive than other places. So you can always go to Container Store and get your ideas and then maybe go source the products out somewhere else. But they're very helpful over there as well. But again, I just want to caution you, just don't go crazy and go bunch, buy a bunch of organizing stuff that's not going to work for your systems. I cannot tell you guys how many times I go into a client's home and they've just got baskets and buckets and bins and dividers and they're like I don't know what to do with them you know I just I keep it because it's what we do we think okay if I go buy this thing it's going to make me organized because that's what marketing tells us is that this is going to help me get organized but if it doesn't fit for you then it's not going to help you be organized we still have to do the work which is goes back to that what are we willing to do to get ourselves and our homes organized so again, we go back to let's be realistic about what we're willing to do. My client, she was not willing to hang clothes up. So we had to come up with a creative solution. So we used hooks instead. So um, there's no cookie cutter way to do this. It's about finding your own. There's some best practices from this for you know industry best practices. But again, I want it to work for you. And I'm always available. I mean, gosh, you know, I don't know if anywhere on here, if we've got my uh, contact information, but Teresa, you can send that out later, right? And um, I'm happy to talk you guys through a situation or give you some more individual ideas if you want. I'm happy to do that. We're all in this together. So I'll get the list from Laura that she was talking about and we'll send a follow-up email to everyone who attended. And then we'll also provide you with her contact information. Perfect. Is everybody here located locally in Dallas area, Dallas, Fort Worth? Okay. Just making sure. Does anybody else have any more questions? If not, I've got a question for a poll. <laughs> Let me start in one more poll. Just wanted to know um, in the future, if we were to host any other seminars, what type of uh, interest do you have that you would like to see for topics for upcoming seminars. So if you so, can help me out. Can, can I just come to this one next time for the wine tasting one, Teresa? I think that would be lovely. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting very creative. I'm actually doing a, a virtual wine tasting um, at, a, at another it. community that I work for. So it's not impossible. And, and, and again, really? these would these are virtual ideas that we're looking at. So you would do them in the comfort of your own home. Mm -hmm. So just let us know what interests you. I have a question. Um, yes. It's about electronic cords. Um, <laughs> I don't know where they came from originally, but I've got like 20 of things that connect to things and I'm afraid to throw them away. Mm -hmm. um, what do you do about that? So great question, Lori. So here's, a, here's something that I say I, I ask myself, I ask of my clients, what's the worst thing that could happen if you threw that thing away? Um, when my husband and I were moving, we left Texas for a while. And when we were coming back to Texas, we almost divorced over a big bin full of cords, electronic cords. And uh, what I finally, what we, what we agreed upon was we went through them and he was very reluctant to let them go because what if he needed them someday? So I literally packed them in a box and we sealed it shut and we wrote the date of, you know, that we've sealed the box shut. And then a day later, when it was never, um, when the box hadn't been opened, we went through it one more time and we were able to let go of everything. So I always ask myself, what is the worst thing that could happen? If I threw this piece of paper away, if I threw this cord away, if I threw this manual away, nine times out of 10, it can be re replaced. Now, if you get to that thing where you're like, absolutely, this is one of a kind, I cannot find this on the internet, I, I cannot replace it, then that's the thing that you hold on to. Um, but those cords, yeah, the cords, most of them can be replaced. Uh, I just was doing this with a client yesterday and I was real, I very much appreciated the way that, cause it was just a big box of tangled up cords. And she was very realistic. She said, I haven't touched these things in about five years. So go ahead and let them go. So we went ahead and let them go. You know, we decided that 
if she had to buy a new USB port. The only thing we did keep was um, the HDMI cords that go on the back of TVs because those are kind of expensive, but everything else is easily replaceable. So just go through it one more time, Lori, and just see. If you don't know what it goes to, let it go. Thanks. That helps a lot. I appreciate yes. your permission to throw them away. <laughs> <laughs> Girls, I will give you permission all day long to get rid of your stuff. <laughs> but at the same time, if you guys ever do hire a professional organizer to come work with you, I really want to encourage you to make sure that you resonate with that individual and that it's a good fit for you. Um, I don't it's very important to me that your organizer is very respectful of your stuff. I tell my clients, I've practiced this for years, nothing leaves your home without your permission because it's not my stuff, it's your stuff. What makes it great, why it's wonderful to work with a professional organizer is because it's not their stuff. So we don't have an emotional pull, we don't have an attachment to it, we can see things a little bit differently than you can, and oftentimes we can gently encourage you to let go of something, or we can say, well, maybe we could put this in a keepsake bin or something like that, rather than um, just holding on to it for, or just getting rid of it, because it's taking up space. Not my decision. I'm going to facilitate that with my clients, but I'm never going to have anything leave your house without your permission. So make sure that if you hire someone ever, you find someone that's respectful of your space and your items that way. When I was on that TV show, Hoarders, I'll never forget, um, sweet, sweet little lady. And um, one of the things, working with a hoarder is a different uh, you know, it's obviously has it requires a different skill set, but one of the things that we have to make sure that people are aware of what they're letting go of and they're not doing it in a, under stress. And this sweet little lady, I was watching her and she was just throwing stuff away right and left. And I remember make, thinking to myself, she's going through this too fast. And sure enough, I got there the next morning and the TV crew was literally in the dumpster looking for her pacemaker battery because she was so, it was so stressful. And whether you're a hoarder or you just are dealing with clutter in your home, it is very stressful to try to organize your stuff. It, it can bring up a lot of energy around it, uh, especially between if you have more than one person living in your house. And uh, because what may look like junk to you or to me could be an absolute treasure for someone else. So be, again, it goes back to being gentle and go to, go look at the, you know, the blogs or the internet for inspiration, of course, because that's really pretty and it might give you some ideas, but then be practical and realistic about what you will do to maintain your organization systems after you get them set up. All right. Well, thank you, Laura. I really appreciate your time today. This is really good information and I am pumped to go get organized. <laughs> good girl. Good, Teresa. You go do that. Everybody else just, you know, uh, like I said, we'll uh, send out the information. I'm always available to um, answer questions, point you in the right direction. I'm happy to do so. And Teresa, thank you so much for the opportunity today. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Appreciate your time. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank Take you. care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye.